Ladies and gentlemen, several years back, in fact, I think it might have been perhaps 2018, I played a Jack Pettis set, uh, a very uh, obscure sax player, Jack Pettis, and into this set I shoehorned a Lauren McMurray tune, uh, saying, well, we're going to do this anyway, because although they're not really related, here's an even more obscure saxophone player, he'll never get his own set at Whitley Bay. Oh yes, he will, and, and he has. You'd be forgiven for not knowing who Lauren McMurray is. Even here at Whitley Bay, he was uh, a very fine saxophone player, but he died at the age, I think, of 24 in 1922. And despite the fact that he recorded quite extensively and sounds marvelous and is uh, featured on just about every recording that we know he's on, uh, it, it really kind of he faded from um, the limelight, I guess. But he was a mammoth figure in the uh, pioneering of the early jazz saxophone. And um, today we're going to readdress this balance a little bit by uh, playing some of these tunes. Uh, and this is one that was recorded by McMurray's California Thumpers uh, in only a few, a few months before his death. In uh, June 1922, he recorded Haunting Blues. <laughs> So special about this guy, Lauren McMurray. Well, he had a, magni a magnificent yeah. sound on the saxophone to start with, uh, a bit more of a straight sound and not a novelty sound, although he used novelty effects. Uh, he was very good at slap tonguing. He had a lot of blue notes in his playing as well. 
and he used to slide between notes in a in a way kind of like Sidney Bechet was doing at the time, um, but not in the same way, just a similar sort of effect. Um, here's the one tune we played back in 2018, and uh, you know I wouldn't want you to think we were repeating ourselves, so I transcribed the alternate take solo, <laughs> um, which I think is even better. So here we are with Blue, uh, and this is a tune he recorded several times in different groups, uh, but this once again is McMurray's California Thumpers, and now for this particular session, uh, he was augmenting the band with Tuba, so we've got Phil joining us. Here we are with Blue, the alternate. <coughs> okay. It's faster than you think. McMurray uh, played with all sorts of different groups, uh, including Eddie Elkins and his orchestra, uh, and his own group, as you heard, the Virginians, uh, who was in uh, the Paul Whiteman saxophone uh, group also at the time, although I didn't record with him, unfortunately. Uh, but he was also playing with a group called Mike, Mike Markell's Orchestra. Uh, not Markell apostrophe S, Markell's apostrophe, optional other S, um, orchestra. And uh, this group uh, had a really stomping sound, and uh, they, you know, everything they recorded was great. Uh, and this is one that they recorded, Nobody Lied. It was a bigger group, but we've chosen to sort of scale it down to the Thumpers lineup for this. Uh, as I said, and Nobody Lied, written by Edwin J. Weber. This is the Mark Hell's tempo we're about to attempt. Thank you. 
At this juncture, I'd like to mention that uh, a lot of what we know about Lauren McMurray, uh, not everything, but a lot of what we know about McMurray, we owe to two friends of the, the jazz party. One of them is here today, and that's Mark Beresford. Uh, where are you, Mark? Oh, there he is. Uh, Mark did some uh, great research on, on Lauren McMurray early on, and uh, some of this appeared online, and I was able to kind of learn a bit about that and know which recordings to search. Um, and then our friend Colin Hancock, who appeared as the Young, uh, young Musician Award winner in, uh, in one year, 2017 maybe, 2018, no, 2019 it was. Um, he also uh, collaborated with Mark to do lots of research, and together they have released an album on Archiophone uh, earlier this year with a lot of detailed research and wonderful recordings similar to the ones that you're hearing now. Um, and if you're interested in Lauren McMurray, I highly recommend it. Uh, you know, get in before they win the Grammy for it, I'd say. Um, okay, so we're moving on to another one from the California Thumpers, and this has possibly the longest song title in existence. It's called Just Because You're You, That's Why I Love You. Uh, which feels a little bit redundant. It has the word you in it three times. Uh, so that's a fairly high percentage. Uh, anyway, uh, we hope you enjoy our rendition of Just Because You're You, That's Why I Love You. It almost feels like a, like a threat. for you, but uh, I haven't introduced the full lineup to you, and uh, doing a marvellous job in the brass department here, we have Alistair Allen and Mike Davis. Yay! In the rhythm section, Phil Rutherford on the tuba. Yay! The magnificently raggy banjo on that last one was Thomas Spatz-Langham. 
Well, it's for a choice for good pianists here, but um, uh, what a fine choice we have here for this uh, ragtime piano or late ragtime or early jazz, whatever it is. Uh, couldn't ask for better than Mr. Morton Gunnar Larsson. Uh, we've uh, augmented the band for this next one. We've got Emma Fisk on the violin. This one really takes some playing, and we're getting now to the slub tongue I mentioned earlier. Uh, we haven't heard a lot of it, I've been doing a little bit in most of the tunes we've played. This one has a lot more, and it really takes some playing. This is Lonesome Mama Blues, and uh, I think it must have been a tune that Lauren really enjoyed, because he recorded it with several bands, and his solo even appears on uh, one of the Benny Moten records uh, a few years later, so people remembered this. Uh, his version of this. Lots of mama blues. Wish me luck. <laughs> Good luck. Fisk on the violin there, Emma Fisk. Okay, so Emma's leaving the stage, and for our final number, I'd like to ask Nick Ball to join us. Alright. With, as you can see, armed um, with just... Oh, nothing at all. Okay. <laughs> that didn't work very well. Nick? Just a horrible symbol. Nick? Oh, thank you. There we go. Um, I asked Nick in because this last tune has an obnoxious symbol on the recording. And uh, this one is called Truly. It was recorded by Lauren McMurray with the Knickerbocker Orchestra, which was not a jazz band. It's not a jazz record, but it does happen to have the most impressive 
uh, satang, I think uh, Lauren recorded. Uh, it's called Truly, and we hope you've enjoyed our little tribute to Lauren O'Kamari. I hope so, yes? Please clap, please clap longer, I need to recover from the previous number. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so we're going to finish with Truly, thank you for listening, and uh, we'll see you with our uh, other sets, but in the meantime, here we go. Nick, is that symbol obnoxious enough? You've written on the part loud and obnoxious and not well executed. Well, <laughs> so do you, I'll do, I'll do do you think worst. you can manage? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see what we can manage, yeah. Uh-oh. There we go. One, two. I want two, three. <laughs> Thank you.